Hello everybody, Ian Robson here. Welcome back to a Tongue Store Farm. Alright, we got a couple going on today. Just returning the cultivator back to our main farm here. And then I'm going to grab uh, one of the cedars, I think. And there's the other cloth I just have chilling out over there. Um, some people have asked me where I've gotten those things, and uh, they are from Mod Hoster. If in case you're wondering. And uh, let's uh, lower that. There we go. Drop that down, turn that off, switch to the other tractor. And we are going to go plant some. Oh, could we plant corn? I guess we could plant corn in that field. Um, let's just check. Here's a little funny story for you guys. So I already started recording this episode, and I was just, you know, doing my normal thing, you know, recording and whatnot. And then I went to go, I moved one of the objects on my microphone around a little bit, and I went to reach to get to the keyboard, and apparently I moved it so much so, I moved one of the objects so it was in my, you know, where I normally reach to move, like to move around the keyboard. I totally smacked the microphone and it almost fell off the desk. Oh man, I was like, Aah! it was pretty funny. No, I thought it was funny at least. Um, so that's one of the random little stories I got to tell you for today um, when I was recording or tried to record the episode. It was only like, I only got like three minutes into the episode and then I did that. So and then I promptly moved the object that I hit uh, to a more appropriate location. Anyways, um, field four has not been planted. Field four is not too far from there. Field 11 has been planted. Uh, what should we put in field? I could put potatoes again. Now I do have a corn harvester or corn planter, I should say and a sugar beet planter, uh, but I don't have a sugar beet harvester. Um, not yet, at least. I could plant something else. Well, should we plant something else? I did, I want to plant, uh, uh, I wanted to plant, <laughs> I don't know why I'm going in circles. I wanted to plant, uh, oh, well, let's, let's just rent a potato, har potato planter and do that again. Um, I think potatoes is a good choice considering we've invested so much into it already. Um, we probably should actually sell some potatoes. Actually, maybe we'll do that first. Um, I'm all over the place today, apparently. There we go, I'll stop there and grab this guy here. And what we'll do is we'll sell enough potatoes so we can actually get the potato planter. Um, and that'll allow us to, of course, plant potatoes without having to rent it every single time. So I've been playing a lot of a game called Transocean, which is game, this game's been out forever. Um, but it's like a, you know, a business simulation type game with boats, basically. And it's fantastic. Well, I really like it. Uh, it reminds me of an old game called Ports of Call from the, when I used to, the well, game I used to play long ago. Uh, one of the very first uh, video games that got me into video gaming. Uh, it's called Ports of Call. And I used to play that on the Amiga. Uh, which is kind of like a, somewhat like a Commodore 64, if memory serves. It's been such a long time since I talked about it. We used to have an Amiga, which was like a gaming machine back in the day. And we used to have a game called Ports of Call, which is very, it's very reminiscent of that same game. Um, so I picked it up in the Steam sale, and I haven't played much of it. And then the other day I decided, or this weekend, I guess, that the on Sunday I decided to pick it up and start playing it. And oof, I uh, should have started playing on the weekend, because I, I don't, didn't realize how much I actually was playing. Like, I picked it up and then on Sunday, and I don't know how many hours I put into it already. It's such a... <laughs> It's such a, I don't know how to describe it. It's not like a difficult game or anything. It's just one of those games where, you, ah, well, at least for me, it's one of those games where I, you know, don't realize the time has gone by. Uh, now we want to get past this. Uh, I'll have to move that fertilizer spreader. And we're going to sell some potatoes. And then uh, hopefully by selling some potatoes, we'll make enough money so we can buy a, a harvester. Really? I guess we're not close enough to it. Uh, we'll buy, not a harvester, a uh, potato planter. Eventually having a harvester would be nice too, but uh, not necessary, of course. You can always rent or contract it out, so to speak. Let's move this out of the way. It was a bad job in the first place. Why does it say MPK? That's weird. That shouldn't say MPK. Uh, not on this map, at least. There we go. Let's get in here. And I guess we are stuck somehow? What the heck are we stuck on? Oh, it's a tire. It didn't look like we were stuck. Really? Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I wasn't, uh... I didn't give enough space. <laughs> oh, don't ever hire me to move stuff into your farm, apparently. Oh, goodness. Anyways, American Truck Simulator is coming very soon now. Uh, I have not seen the price on Steam as of yet in Canadian dollars. Uh, the price I have seen based on... Uh, the SES blog, at least. Uh, they're suggesting $20 American and Euros. So in Canadian, that's going to be more expensive than I would like right now. Because in Canada, our dollar is so low. Um, let me put it in perspective. I follow, I follow finance a little bit. I'm not like a finance guru, not by a long shot. But I follow finance a little bit. And right now, the Canadian dollar is worth, last time I checked at least, under 70 cents to the American dollar. So like, we basically, if, we, if I want to buy something in America right now, or United States specifically, not in America, uh, United, States, United States specifically, I will have to pay an extra 30% just because our Canadian dollar is so low right now. It is ridiculous. But, you know, that's the way finances go sometimes. Uh, we don't control these things. It's just the way it goes. And let's see if we can't get this in here a little bit and actually get some potatoes out of there. There we go. Anyways, so yeah, that's what's been going on. Um, I'm very curious to see what the pricing is going to be like in Canada. I'm assuming it's going to be like $30, which is, I would pay 40 or $50 probably for the game. Um, but what they're doing is they're giving you like a DLC right up front, which is neat. So um, it's going to be kind of interesting. A lot of people have asked if I'm going to put American Truck Simulator on the channel, and the answer is yes, of course. I'm going to put American Truck Simulator on the channel because I do enjoy my Euro truck, so I'm definitely going to enjoy uh, American Truck Simulator. I've actually kind of eased off a of Euro truck a little bit because I want to, uh, uh, because I want to make sure that I have, uh, that I am ready for uh, American Truck Simulator. In the sense that I don't know, I go, I personally go through phases where I want to play Euro truck sometimes, and other times I'm not not so into Euro truck, so. Uh, that's the reason why I'm kind of holding, holding off a little bit right now. Uh, and this guy's right there, so he can stay there. We also need a front loader still, uh, or like a wheel loader, I should say. That's doing all right there. Uh, we also need a wheel, lo wheel loader for the BGA, which would be nice. And I think we have a whole heap of homogenized milk we need to deal with as well, if I had to guess. All right, where are we going with these potatoes? This is a good question. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Potatoes at Agrivis. Anywhere else? 382. 382. 363. And where was that other place? Uh, the, I don't think I've ever been there before. Where on earth is that? Oh, it's way up in the town. Sure, we can go for a little drive. That's not a problem. Uh... I guess we better to go this way. Thinking about it. There we go. And then left. And then right. Whoa. And there we go. Nope. Oh, Ian, you wanted to go the other direction. Oh well, we can do it this way too, I suppose. Or can you? I think you can go. Up by the mix station. If memory serves. Anyways. Yep. I've been really enjoy really enjoying this map. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I've been playing quite a bit of it. Um, I, it's funny, when I go to record, I just kinda like, what do I feel like playing today? And uh, this one seems to be the map I uh, gravitate towards as of late. Uh, so I apologize, if you're looking for jo the Georgia map or the Michigan-USA map, uh, uh, they're nice maps, but just for some reason this map has really drawn my attention. Let's put the tarp on there. Um, has really drawn my attention just because uh, I don't know, just lots of lots of little things to do. It's a nice, it's well put together. It looks pretty. All that, all these things. Um, so it's not just one thing. It's a combination of things which makes this map. Uh, I don't know, which makes me gravitate towards the map at least. So. But I apologize. If you'd like to see some more Michigan or some more Georgian USA, leave a comment below. I will uh, heed your comments and be like, okay, Ian, this morning we're going to record the Georgian USA map. Or we're going to record Michigan. So, 
you'll have to uh, encourage me to do that um, because this map is definitely drawing my uh, it's definitely drawing my attention more so than those maps at the moment. But if you want to see it, you gotta let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll keep recording on this map because I do like enjoy this map. Uh, don't need any fuel. Here's a little bridge. My crosses. There we go. Perfect. And there's a little field. There's lots of little random little fields in this map. Now, lots of them I haven't even touched, and some of them are just you know sitting there. Not fallow, but with rotten, not rotten, but withered plants on it basically at the moment, so. Oh man. This part, I didn't realize how crazy this, how distant this place was. Uh, I always forget, because it's like, uh, this, one, one of the interesting things about this particular map is the fact that it is a big map, but you don't like get the feeling like it's massive. Like when you play like the States version 8, like you get the sense that it's just enormous and it's going to take a long time to do something on that map. Which is why it works really well for like multiplayer and stuff like that, right? Agravis, we're or no. We're looking for the Raf the other place. It's the last one up here. Uh, but yeah, you get that sense. Like when you play this particular map, I get the sense that, you know, it's a big map, but not uh whoops, where am I going? Um wrong turn, apparently. Oh, goodness. I don't think we can, uh... We have an agricultural truck. We can just, you know, hop off the road and turn around. Sure, why not? No one's gonna question that in an agricultural truck. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, that would be like a little, weird, little strange. But, uh... Remember, Ian, turn right. Turn right at the Y. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, you do get the sense that this map is a large map. But not uh, one of those like overwhelming maps. Like sometimes when there are larger maps, they are uh, overwhelming in the sense that you know, especially when you play single player a lot. Like I tend to play a lot of single player as opposed to multiplayer, just because the times I uh, this is our turn here, isn't it? Yeah, uh, just because the time zone I'm in sometimes. Uh, is there? This was the wrong choice for this. Is there another entrance on the other side here? Yes, looks like there is. Good. Um, well, this is in the contractor's yard, the Groenbrook, however you're supposed to say that. Uh, is that the cell point there? I'm going to have to do a loop. Or is this the cell point here? What's the difference? I think that one's a way station. Alright. This is why you have. Uh, this is why you use European trucks on these particular types of maps because American truck probably would have had a bit more difficulty maneuvering in that area. All right, so we need uh, at minimum for a potato planter. Uh, where are we here? Potato harvesting sewing machines. Uh, we want to get the biggest one because let's be honest here. We don't want this this one. I uh, want to get the bigger one here. Fifty-seven thousand is what we need. That shouldn't be a problem, I don't think. Uh, looks like it'll be one more load's worth, at least, uh, of potatoes, as uh, Yusi would say. Although I haven't talked to Yusi very often, I wonder how he's doing. <laughs> Person just drove, <laughs> walked right through the, the trailer there. Jeez. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, we want to turn right here. But as you can see, like this is like a nice little area. They've done a good job of like uh, modeling uh, this area in terms of like the, the town itself, and they have some they add, add some little things in here. Like the contractor's yard's pretty nifty as well. So if you like doing contracting work or you have contractors come in often, that, be, that can be kind of nice as well. It looks like that's like a little. I have no idea what that is, but they added some nice little things there. And I think there's another. Uh, what map was that? I think it was maybe Chellington or Coldborough, one of those maps. Also had a contractor's yard, which is kind of cool. I don't know, I, I like the idea of it. Um, it gives you the option of where you want to work out of. So, like, I work out of the main farm, but you can easily work out of the contractor's yard. Um, and that's where some of the larger fields are as well. Some of them, not all of them. So, it is pretty sweet. Alright. It's funny, the other day I was playing Farm Sim, and I had this odd, odd thing happen where I hit the Y button to bring up the menus, and uh, it was all like, Ari, it was all messed up, I don't know why. Uh, it was very strange. I don't know the reason why, either. 
so it would make me question like do I have a mod in there that shouldn't be in there like what's the deal so I don't know what it was in the end but I just restart the game and went through my mod list and deleted a couple I don't use anymore and then moved on basically and it was fine but it's very strange it's very frustrating usually if you ever have problems with farm sim like the map not loading uh, mod not showing up uh, there's two reasons usually. The first reason is there's a mod conflict, and the second reason is you may not have unzipped a file. Specifically with maps, that's the case. Um, and some tractor mods, uh, you may have to unzip them before you can have access to them, so it's one or the other usually. And uh, those are usually the two reasons why uh, you, you don't have access to a particular mod or a map or something like that. So, Alright, uh, we need some more potatoes. Uh, one more load should suffice, I imagine. Let's just line this up a bit better here. And... Are we going to be able to... Ah, he should be okay. Let's see if we can do this without making a complete mockery of ourselves. What I'm, what I'm kind of curious about in... Uh, not Euro Truck, American Truck Simulator is going to be... Um, some of the added uh, experience gains from parking, uh, which is going to be kind of cool. So you still have the possibility of, uh, you still have the possibility of, you know, using the automatic parking scenario. Uh, but if you want to get some more experience, you can have it set up so much, uh, you can have it set up so you, uh, um, so you can, you know, just, what am I trying to say here? You can have it automatically park or you can have it so you get more experience. There we go. Sheesh. Here, I thought I had enough coffee this morning. I'm on my third cup today. I thought it would have been enough, but apparently not. Oh, man. Three cups, and it's already like 10, not even 10 o'clock yet. So here's the other planter we have for corn and for sugar beets. And it probably will do... It does some other things, too, depending on the map you have. Uh, like this map is just uh, the standard fruit, so it's probably only the standard fruits on that one. Uh, this guy, I think, is full or practically full. We can actually grab the telehandle here and fill that up with a bit more potatoes while we're waiting. Because we have like 400,000, there we go, 400,000 liters of potatoes, so. Uh, some people were asking about a construction simulator uh, and whether or not it worked with the side tech side panel. It does. I was able to get it to work with the side panel, um, for those people who are curious. Really? Apparently driving underneath the uh, <laughs> driving underneath that conveyor belt was enough for enough to get some sugar beets. Anyhow, but yeah, the side tech side panel does work with construction sim for those people who are curious. Um, I wasn't able to get the G27 and uh, really come on now. I wasn't able to get the G27 and the side tech side panel to work together well with. Uh, construction sim. It was a bit finicky, actually, and I didn't like that. Um, let's raise this up just a little bit. There we go. Um, it was a bit finicky, and I wasn't uh, a big fan of that. Um, I don't know why it was the case, but I got it to work, but it was, like, not as well as I would have liked. And it was, I think it's to do, like, with, a, it's something to do with a calibration or something like that. And, uh, that's what I found, at least, so. It's not as seamless as, like, Euro Truck. Euro Truck's like, you plug it in, you set up the keys, and it's like, bing, bang, boom, done. Whereas other games aren't as good as, aren't as good with peripherals. Oh, that's all it needs? Okay. Uh, aren't as good as peripherals as uh, SES is, apparently, so. But that really makes the game, though, right? Uh, for some people. So, like, for some people, like, uh, Gemin000, for example, he's got uh, quite a few random peripherals. And, uh... It probably makes a big difference for him. All right, one second. All right, so here we are at the uh, same place again. Uh, just drove here off camera, and we're just gonna go unload. We should have enough for. We should have enough for the uh, planter, but we'll see. Looking for like I think it's fifty-seven thousand or something like that, somewhere in that area. So we'll see what happens here. Fifty-seven. I think that's just right in the nose too, isn't it? Sewing machines, barely, barely enough. Look at that, that's crazy. 
So let's go ahead and buy that. There we go. Now we actually own one. This is good for us. <laughs> we made 20,000 and we lost 57,000. Only a slight problem, right? I just noticed, uh, I don't know why I didn't mention this before, but I noticed that FarmSim is bringing some mods to the console now, which is pretty neat. And that's going to be pretty awesome for those people who are using consoles as opposed to PC. So they're kind of making them like semi-official DLCs coming to consoles. And I think there's a particular reason why. Uh, it's because... Uh, they're basically taking the work of the modders and saying, okay, that's so good that we want to bring it to the, to, the, uh, to the consoles. And we'll, you know, I think what they probably did is took the mods, looked at them to make sure they were error free, and then they're going to put them in the consoles because uh, I don't think you can fiddle around with mods so easily in a console as opposed to PC. But we'll have to see. Maybe in the future they will bring more. But they definitely have brought a few already, which is good for those people who uh, are using, it, using FarmSim on a console. So. Anyways, I think this will be a good enough place as any to end the episode for now. And then we'll come back next episode. Maybe we'll do a little bit of potato planting. We'll see how it goes. Um, and I guess that'll be it. So let me just stop the truck here. So I'll run into something. So until next time, folks, my name is Ian Rops, and This has been our episode of Farming Simmer 2016 coming at you from Tungstorf Farm. And if you enjoyed yourself, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I will catch you guys later.